Greetings, greetings. <clears throat> <clears throat> greetings and welcome to Prayer for America and the Nations of Walter Zagrevich, mm -hmm. Full Vision Ministries. And today I'm being joined by Reverend Albert Ramirez and by you who have joined us from the nations of the world. Thank you for joining us. And please, before we go any further, take that phone or whatever instrument you are watching us on, tablet or computer, and find that little share button and share this broadcast with your friends by posting it on your profile. If you're watching on Facebook, if you're watching us on LinkedIn, if you're watching us on YouTube and um, Rumble or telegram as well as our page there is an option to share please utilize that it is a way of spreading the gospel of jesus christ and bringing encouragement to many people who need encouragement today welcome brother albert amen always a pleasure to join together with the brethren uh praise god for this trip that we just came back from last week i think it was yeah um i just want to thank god for the um the privilege of being there and uh, i believe we were we're we're partaking of a time when god is moving very powerfully in cuba and i believe that things are changing there dramatically um sometimes we look at things in the natural we look at things with our own five senses and we don't perceive what god is really doing there so but god is really moving there i you know it's been you know since i've been back i've been reflecting on what was what took place there and things that were happening and also things that took place with us physically, uh, that that attack of the enemy. But, uh, you know, I praise God that God is moving. God is changing Cuba quickly. And I think it's going to happen a lot quicker than people realize how that government's going to change. And not only the government, but people are coming to Christ just left and right. I mean, there, when we were there, people accepting Christ, just people where we stayed at, you know, in the hostel we stayed at, a couple received Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, God was God was moving. You know, one lady I laid hands on one church we went to, big church too. It's pretty good size, and uh, uh, they were on fire for God. You know, which is which is amazing to see on that side of the island. You know, where we used to be, and on the other side of the island with with Anga Luis, but on that side of the island, it was amazing to see that church on fire like that. Laid hands on a woman and saw God heal her. Uh, she had a big old growth on her neck, and then right 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 underneath my hand that growth just disappeared so praise god for the things that he that he's doing there amen amen there were many miracles of healing there were many people that were saved there were many people that were baptized in the holy spirit and many pastors were truly and this is the big part they were truly impacted and encouraged some of these pastors could not believe that foreigners would actually come to those places where we had been and uh, i don't know if you recall albert but there were pastors we picked up a few of them as they were yeah. walking uh, but some of them were some pastors walked 14 kilometers to get to that meeting People here wouldn't walk, wouldn't drive 14 kilometers. Well, 14 kilometers is about eight miles or so. Uh, some people won't drive that far to go to a church meeting. But these pastors uh, truly show a commitment to the work of God. I remember, I don't know if it was you or Brother Elkin that had asked uh, people about fasting, talking about fasting, how often do you fast and this and that. Uh, and... Uh, and that we were writing and um, we were talking to people. And, and and I remember that lady that we gave a ride to. She's one of the leaders that attended the um, conference. And uh, she says, well, we, we actually, I actually fast quite often. The food runs out and we fast, you know, <laughs> and it's, it's a reality that we don't know here in America. And um, it is um, on one hand, it's quite sad that people do not have sufficient to eat and it's a forced fast. It's not like you, they just decided to fast. Uh, they just don't have enough to eat. But we thank God that um, for his provision, it was an expensive venture in that transportation is so hugely expensive um, and in, in traveling to all those different cities. But it was worth it all to see the transformative power of God uh, in pastors' lives, leaders' lives, and and then those um, 
we'll have Lisa and Sergio come on here uh, and they'll talk a little more about that. But it was amazing to see uh, some of those faces light up and, and see when they started learning that there are possibilities, there are ways, there are things that they can do within their confines to uh, actually grow certain crops, do certain things uh, and be somewhat self-sufficient. And so the, um, the the ministry was quite multifaceted. Not only did we have, I would say, the five-bold ministry, but we also had the entrepreneurship, the business uh, side of things to, because Cuba is allowing small private enterprises to be established right now. And uh, we're trying to encourage Christians to get into um, those opportunities, take advantage of those opportunities so that the kingdom of God can go forward. Because as you know, Albert, we all know that finances are needed to extend the kingdom of God. Absolutely. I mean, and then of course, it talks about that in the 12th chapter of Romans about uh, ministry of giving, you know, that you need people to give to the ministry. You need people to, to for God to bless people, you know, financially. I mean, you have that in, as an example in the Old Testament. You know, God blessed people. And, of course, David, he blessed David. David blessed the people with his finances. You know, he and, and also blessed God with his offering sacrifices with, you know, millions of dollars in today's, you know, finances. But it, it, you need people to finance the work of God. There was None of that was done for free in the Old Testament. You know, God anointed people to make money, to create things and, and he anointed them to do so by the Holy Spirit in order to support to uh, to fulfill God's plan and God's purpose. And which one, one thing is good about it is that <clears throat> the things that um, uh, nowadays that people need to realize, which which I, I realized on this trip, was that you know people their their knowledge. You know, the more knowledge we gain of who we are in Christ and the possibilities, uh, you know, and go beyond just praise and worship, which is don't misunderstand me extremely important praise and worship uh, and, and 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 exalting god there's that's extremely important but i'm talking about the knowledge and what the word of god says we can do and things that we suffer to me uh you know like it says in, in hosea 4 6 god says my people perish for lack of knowledge and i and i believe it's a lack of knowledge of knowing you know fully what god's plan and purpose is in us in creating uh, the possibilities creating in Christ. I mean, you talk about Christ. He, Christ would have never, you know, he walked around, he walked around in his day. And when there was a lack of food and there was no way to go near and get it, they were out in the, in the boonies, if you will, like we were, there was, there was, a, there was a, a knowledge of God and in Christ as a man and as son of God baptized by the Holy ghost. Uh, there was a, a knowledge of the ability of God to, to, to multiply just a little bit of fish and a little bit of bread in his hands and multiple feed multitudes. So, I mean, I, that's a possibility. It's not just a possibility because Christ did it. It was a possibility for those people. And like that lady said, there's times they fasted not on purpose, but because there was the lack of food, you know, well, I believe that there was the, that if, if that's taught, you know, if that's taught that that's a possibility, then the people gain that knowledge that it's not, it's, it's not, God doesn't want his people to suffer. You know, he says, my people perish or suffer unnecessarily, if you will, because of a lack of knowledge. But if you know that there, that's possible, if Jesus multiplied fishes and loaves, God can do that in this day, in this time, you know, with the supernatural, with the Holy Spirit, that's in them just as well as in anyone else. So those, those, those it's knowledge that needs to be revealed, you know, of the possibilities. We can't just limit God and say, well, Lord, you know, you can't do it because we're out here in the boonies. There's no food. There's no this. There's none of that. You know, if there's a, a few fishes and loaves, let it be multiplied. Let it feed the multitudes in that area, no matter how poor it is. The possibilities, all, the, all things are possible to them that believes and all things are possible with God. So we got to get that knowledge and that understanding uh, of, of God in, in, in every person. That's what the fivefold ministry for in Ephesians four uh, was it uh, eleven through thirteen. So, I mean, we, we if we don't have that knowledge, then you won't believe for it. If you don't believe for it, you can't receive. You know, so it's very important to get knowledge in people about the possibilities with God in Christ Jesus. 
Amen. And um, we were able to feed the pastors and leaders and all who attended the conferences. And not only were we able to feed them, and some people don't realize you don't just go to a store and pick up food in Cuba. You may find a, a, an odd piece or two of, of something, even bread, uh, just to be able to find a loaf of bread. Some places we pass and we see a whole bunch of people say, well, they got bread, you know. And just something as simple as bread is uh, a loaf of bread is is precious. And we were able to give them morning bread. We were able to most places uh, feed them with chicken and uh, a nice uh, piece of chicken with some rice and some beans and some other things. And uh, <clears throat> we uh, and, and they were blessed and they were appreciative. And not only that, but we as a team brought different things to give to the people who attended these conferences. And, and some of the most basic things that we take so for granted here, uh, the basic um, uh, pain meds, yeah, uh, and, and thankfully, one of the team members was able to bring a lot of um, other meds uh, that, uh, that, that are not available or not found there, very scarce. And um, but clothing, uh, toothpaste, toothbrushes, um, you know, hygiene products, and uh, boots, shoes, and, and other things, and clothes. And they were so blessed um, for the kids, dolls, and backpacks, and uh, t shirts. And they were so blessed, they were so thankful. And um, I, I think one of the uh, things that stands out, and we keep talking about, is that stop we made at the children's church. And, and to see those precious children recently come to Jesus Christ, actually leading their own service, sort of speak there, and um, and just singing, worshiping God, praying for one another. And they prayed for you, Brother Albert. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, of course, the devil was mad because we were down there. We we're in a different area. We're teaching, bringing knowledge and revelation from God to the people there and uh, even to the children. In fact, that's where we should start in the beginning with. We should teach the children from the get-go to believe God and not to limit God. That's that's what I, I feel the message is for today right now is is not limiting God, you know, because we limit God too much. I, I think we limit God with our own understanding, with our own abilities, our own intellect, everything that we have and we can do, you know, our own provision, our own things we can take there. But I believe God's able to, to create supernaturally things and 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 change things dramatically, uh supernaturally. I mean, I remember hearing a testimony about, I think it was Nicaragua or uh, one town in Nicaragua, the whole town were, were drunks. So they man, they have no work. There was not, the jail was full all the time and overflowing. Uh, and I think it was, it was called uh, Transformations, the, the program. It was a Christian program and they went to this town, you know, and what happened is one one pastor, uh, one, one pastor, he had like three people in his church. He got together, was fasting, was praying. Uh, they were praying for change, for God to change and touch their little town. And what happened is the people, uh, you know, the people got started getting saved, started going to the church, and knowledge was revealed. Knowledge of God and and of the impossible, uh, and, and and you know, God, and God blessing what they put their hands to do. Knowledge of that and God's deliverance. They got delivered uh, from alcoholism. They got you know the jails got emptied. Uh, the, they, they, they had some excellent soil there to grow, uh, fruits and vegetables and, and the vegetables uh, was there, they were shown on this program. Remember that, that video, uh, of that town. And then those are the possibilities. I mean, the, you know, carrots were like about this big, you know, and, uh, you know, tomatoes, like, like cantaloupes. I mean, it is God blessing what they put their hands to. It was God's anointing that did that. Not because they were exceptional farmers or anything. It was because they didn't limit God. They got a, a knowledge and an understanding that all things are possible. God, they believed that. And God blessed the work of their hands. And not only that, blessed the work of the pastor and those few people that were there. The whole town got saved. The whole town, the jail was, was empty. There wasn't even any... But not one person in jail anymore after that. So it, it's the possibilities with God. We have to start believing it and, and stop limiting God. We we just limit God just like Israel did. You know, they limit God in the fact that he God wanted to take him into the promised land. And they said, they said, there's giants in there. They started leaning on their own understanding, thinking, you know, we look like grasshoppers. These guys are 10 times our size and they'll kill us. They'll step on us, you know, but, but we got to stop limiting God. 
you know, Joshua and Caleb had a different mindset. They Their mindset was that all things were possible with God. And that the, if, you know, God would be with them, which, of course, we know that Jesus is with us. We're in him and he and he and us, you know, that that the possibilities are endless. You know, and if you look at quantum physics, the possibilities are endless. You know, so it, it's a matter, a matter of knowledge, I think, and, and uh, of our understanding of what God says we can or can't we can do it too many times we're focused on what we can't do in the bible but <clears throat> when we read our bibles and th stuff but we got to start focusing on what can be done and what the possibilities are and and start trying to, to to convey that 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 knowledge and that message to god's people not to limit him amen and i uh, i think that um there is that limitation that we put um around what god can do and we tend to put um, God in a box, if we could put it uh, in those terms, meaning, well, this is only the way God, God only works in this way. And, and God can work in so many ways that we cannot imagine. And, but because we uh, have a finite thinking, we will sometimes miss out on God and because we don't recognize what he is doing or trying to do, and because of our limited understanding, but God is a limitless God. He is omniscient. He is uh, omnipotent, and all things are possible with God, and including in the worst or most difficult or most humble of situations. And like you say, yes, we were out. I mean, uh, you, you wouldn't expect to find people out there in the farmlands, in the boonies, out way in the outback, and yet in these pastures, these leaders walking, some of them coming on the backs of uh, this kind of a uh, truck or on a horse and buggy or coming on uh, um, what we posted is like a tractor pulling this kind of a, like a little trailer with people standing in it. I mean, people um, in this country, no way would they go in something like that. And yet um, they were hungry. And what's interesting on that particular meeting, Albert, I don't know if you recall, I, I was to my surprise, we had pastors from different denominations, different movements, including Seventh-day Adventist and, and I believe Baptist and Methodist and of course Pentecostal and different Pentecostal um, affiliations. But it was interesting that and how receptive they were, and and, and it was. Um, and there, I, I still remember Pastor Guillermo, the the tears in his eyes. I mean, he was kind of in unbelief, you know. When Pastor Angel talked to him about doing this event, he was believing and yet unbelieving until he would, uh, until it actually happened because. It, it reminded because it, it just he thought who in the world's going to come out here? Foreigners come to this place, and that that little church we showed pictures that green church that was a miracle. He said that's a miracle. There was nothing there. He came there, started ministering. He built that. There was nothing there, and um, I tell you, with God, all things are possible. Um, yes, uh, for us, a very humble, um, but let me tell you, the hunger for God. And their, uh, how they were strengthened, how they were encouraged, it, it just, um, it was powerful. And it reminded me of, um, of one of the first uh, couple of times going to Moscow and uh, the, the bishop of the Pentecostal churches, Brother Murza at that time, he was believing and yet in somewhat of a disbelief until we would actually come and hold the meeting because we said we're going to help them start a church. We're going to have a crusade and we'll start a church, we'll support that church. And, and he says, you know, we've had so many promises, so many people uh, say this, say that, and, and this would never come through. And so I was hopefully believing this would actually happen. And when, he, and when the day came, his, his eyes were so big and he was just so thankful, so grateful. And, and it was just the first of many that we helped plant not only in Moscow, but in, in, in all throughout Russia. And of course, in Ukraine, we started working there. And for those of you that are not familiar with our ministry, we have been working in the former Soviet Union for over 30 years, planting churches, training leaders, and um, 
um, and, and really, really evangelizing a lot of areas that have, had not been touched at that point. Um, now more and more people are coming to Jesus Christ, have come to Jesus Christ. And some areas that we used to go to have become uh, difficult for us to get to, let's put it that way. Um, but let me tell you, the work was not in vain. The churches go on. The churches keep moving. Those pastors uh, keep preaching and souls are being saved. And the wonderful thing, Albert, is that those churches are multiplying. They're not holding just to themselves. They are planting other churches. And that's what yeah. it's about, uh, multi uh, duplicating ourselves and increasing, extending the kingdom of God. That Albert, you talked about limiting God. And unfortunately, we sometimes do that. But there are people that have tuned in and tune in and will tune in to this broadcast with needs, people that have a need of healing. There are many people dealing with cancers, and there are those that have lost loved ones uh, due to cancer, due to other uh, disease, or just, just passed away, and they're mourning right now. But let, uh, I want us to pray for these people. I want us to pray. Um, I'm not going to mention names right now, but one that that you do know very well is um, Pastor Andre, who just passed away, and his dear wife, Olga, precious family, precious couple, serve God with all of their heart. And I was there when I met Andre when he was in his early 20s, just starting that church uh, there in Zapodisha, preaching there, helping him establish that um, that work. But um, it's so sad to see a good person, a good man uh, pass away. We know where he's at. We know he's in rejoicing with the Lord right now. But the work of God uh, must go on. And so we want to pray for God to to intervene on behalf of the family, the church, the churches there in the area. They don't need less pastors. They need more pastors, more leaders, more missionaries there. And so I want us to pray for them. I want us to pray for those that are tuning in and may have the fear of cancer or may actually be dealing with cancer because so many are dealing with this dreadful, uh, diabolical disease. And, and I know that with God, all things are possible. We have seen many healed. And Albert just mentioned uh, that one woman with that uh, growth, uh, how it disappeared right in his hand. And uh, there were other healings, um, miracles. Well, God is present right now. He's ready to work in your life, wherever you may be at. And as Brother Albert had mentioned, you, we limit God sometimes. You, some, some of you are watching us in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. I know that you are, and you write us. You, uh, um, and, and some of you are watching us in Nepal, in India, in Africa, in Kenya, and other nations. Some of you are watching us in Asia. And we know that uh, you have limitations where you are at. You have difficult circumstances, and you may be in poor very, very difficult villages or towns where you are ministering. But God is the same God. Let me repeat, God is the same God where you are at and where I am at. He is no different. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. His power is not diminished. His love is not diminished. He loves you. He cares for you. And the hairs on your head are counted. He knows how many you have. He knows everything about you. And uh, Brother Albert, would you pray for people right now that are in need of a breakthrough, need of healing, and, and for comfort um, and solace and, and just the peace of God to uh, over those that have lost loved ones. I only mentioned one, but there's a, a dear friend, Pastor Ron, um, uh, in uh, the United Kingdom. We've known him for many years, and uh, he lost his dear wife, Jenny. They were both partners in ministry. And I know how difficult it is for him because I knew that bond that they had, that love one for another, and that that joint ministry that they carried for so many years. And we saw Brother Ron, uh, I believe it was last year when we were coming back and, and Jenny had to go into a home at that point. But nonetheless, it is very difficult for someone 
that has lived with someone for so many years and be involved in ministry for so many years. And I want us to pray for them, for him as well, and, and for others that are tuning in. And we've had people write in with similar situations. Albert, would you pray? Amen. Well, Father, we just thank you for the privilege of being able to be used by your spirit. And Father, we thank you that we are we are transformed and created in the image of your son. We're to be transformed by that knowledge, by the revelation you give us by your spirit. It was an extreme help to us in every time of need. So, Lord, as we, we come before your throne of grace, we seek your mercy, your grace, in the name of Jesus, for these people who have lost loved ones. Lord, there's, in Jesus' name, we just lift them up and ask that you uh, comfort them by the Holy Spirit, because he is our comforter, and he's an ever-present help in the time of trouble. Any tr troubles your people might be in right now, that you will comfort them. And, and, and I believe if they're in a trouble, Lord, that you will give them a confidence and a boldness and a courage to change that situation through words, through confession, through prayer and through authority that they have in Christ. So Lord, I just pray for the for the comfort of those that have lost loved ones in the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray that you comfort them and and, and bring, let the joy of the uh, and the love of the Holy Spirit that puts in that the love that he sheds in our hearts, the love that the Holy Spirit sheds, let that love just permeate not only to the, each family knowing that how much you love them and that knowing that your word says in Psalm 116 Blessed in the eyes of the Lord are the death of his saints. It's that, and that means that that's a blessing in your eyes, Father, because they come to be with you. And we just praise you and thank you for that, that uh, those, the time of their passing into a better place, into a, a better place of liberty, complete and total liberty in every every facet of their their being. So, Father, we just thank you for comforting them, comfort the family that's here that's here still on earth, that still has the Holy Spirit to comfort them and to strengthen them and to encourage them because it's not the end of the, of the, the end of time period. It's not, it's not the end of everything. It's, it's, it's a new beginning for those loved ones that have passed on. And Lord, it's a new beginning for those that are still here because they can move on forward uh, in, in the Holy Spirit and his love and his power and his knowledge and revelation into new things as your spirit leads them and as he anoints them to be and to, to be uh, anointed by the spirit of God and, and also to minister on, on, on the Lord's behalf. So, Father, we just thank you for that privilege. Uh, and I thank you, Father, in Jesus' name, for the privilege of being able to minister uh, to them, Lord. And as we pray for them, we thank you, Lord, that the words... Our prayers that go forth now are not empty prayers. They're just not prayers of rote because there's something nice to say, but it's from our heart where Christ lives, where the, your life is, Father, where the law of the spirit of life is with the Holy Spirit and the spirit of Christ within us. We can speak words of comfort and joy and peace upon those that are still here. And we just thank you, Lord, and, 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 and that joy and that comfort and that peace come through knowledge, knowing that it's blessed in the eyes of the Lord, that they're with him now. And also knowing, Lord, that that uh, it's not the end of the world right here with those that are still here. It's a new beginning. It's a new beginning with God, a new beginning into different uh, territory, different things for, for God in their lives also. So, Lord, I just thank you for that peace and that comfort. And that knowledge and revelation that you're giving them by the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Lord, we pray for healing for those that have tuned in right now. And we rebuke those yes. cancers. And yes, in the name of Jesus. The bodies, in the name of Jesus, we come against that spirit of infirmity. And we command you, cancer, to die. Amen. Cancers, die in the name of Jesus yes. Christ. Name of Jesus Christ of the body of those that are suffering with prostate cancer, colon yes, cancer, lung cancer, brain cancer, Heart in the name of Jesus. Cancer, you must bow to the name of Jesus Christ. And I command you by the authority of the name of Jesus, leave right now. 
Come out in Jesus' name. And Father, I pray for those who are sick and afflicted. I command that pain to leave. I command that growth to be gone in the name of Jesus Christ. That deaf ear come open. Come unstopped in the name of Jesus. That I be healed right now in Jesus' name. That ringing of the ear stop. That tonight is stop. Leave in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak healing to the ear, nose, and throat. I speak healing to that throat. I speak healing to those lungs. I speak healing to those knees. Oh, God, thank you that that arthritis is leaving right now in the name of Jesus Christ. That person suffering with COVID or or after effects of COVID, we break that sickness. We We destroy that disease. Iris. In the name of Jesus, be healed right now by the power of Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, Father, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you that your Holy Spirit is working. We thank you that your healing power flows right now. For by your stripes, Lord Jesus, we are healed. You paid for our healing. And I thank you that you're healing. I thank you for healing, Brother Albert, myself. Thank you, Lord. Around yes. this Jesus name. The virus is dead. As a virus or sickness. Jesus name. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. And amen. Amen. Praise God. Well, maybe you just tuned in and you're new to this broadcast. We're on here on a daily basis. We pray for America. We pray for the nations. We pray for your needs. We pray for the needs of those that write in and those that are watching. And we ask you to share this program because uh, many, many are in need of healing and a touch of God, a breakthrough in their lives. And Albert, it is so good to talk about the good things that God is doing. There are many bad things. You know, if you just open the news, it's just filled with things that... uh, it, it seems like um, worse cannot get worse, and yet you, you read another one, and it just you cannot believe what you're reading. But you know we can get distracted by those things and and, and stop focusing on God and God's power and God's ability, because where sin abounds, does the grace of God more abound? And the grace of God is at work. The grace of God is being extended to souls around the world. And we are seeing lives change, not just in Cuba, but here in America. There are several uh, university campuses that are experiencing revival. There are people that are being baptized in the ocean, in uh, in other places, just uh, God is moving. We want to see a greater move of God, but God is moving and where hungry souls are. God, if they open up to God, he will fill that. He will touch. He will answer that prayer. So number one, do not stop praying. Number two, do not stop believing. Number three, do not stop acting on your faith. And that means not not only in speaking, but in your actions. Uh, You know, we could talk and talk about Cuba, but unless we literally got on an airplane and flew there and got into these places, we would just be talking about it. But we saw God's power manifested and we saw a certain multiplication of loaves and fishes because um, we did cover a, a large area of territory And I believe that uh, the territorial um, power of the enemy was shook up. The enemy was upset. And and that is why the attacks on health and so on. But he did not have the victory. He will not have the victory. God's work has been done and continues to be done by those that attended, those that were encouraged, those that participated. Albert. Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, and. And we did not limit God, regardless of what we were going through. Like like Paul, you know, Paul, and in, in, in Corinthians, when when Paul said to the Lord, you know, he kept getting beat, he kept getting thrown in prison, kept putting chains, uh, putting stocks, and and you know, and uh, yet he's and he cried out to the Lord about that in the New Testament. This is New Testament. He cries out and says, "Lord, take this cup from me. You know, take this from me. You know, he's he's, he's crying out to God for those things which he suffered. I know theologians have, I don't know where they got that from. But if you just look and meditate on the scripture, you know what happened, what the things, the, the thorn in the flesh was, the things he suffered, you know. And so 
And it wasn't like a, like a, an eye. I read one theologian said it was uh, some eye disease. And it, I don't know where they got that from. But anyway, uh, it was the things that he was suffering for the kingdom of God, for the God, preaching the gospel, things he was going through and stuff like that. But yet he cried out to the Lord to take it from him, to stop it, being thrown in the ocean for a whole night. And, <laughs> but yet, excuse me, but yet, when he cried out to God, what was the Lord's response? You know, this is this is why the Lord tries to tell us and tries to convey to us that all things are possible. You know, we should not limit God because he said, my my grace is sufficient for him. The grace is God's power. It is God's power to over, it's God's power to overcome sin. It's God's power to overcome disease, sickness. Uh, it's God's power to overcome circumstance. It's God's power, period. Grace is God's power in manifestation. So, you know, when Paul was crying out to, to the Lord about, you know, complaining about it, he said, Lord, take this from. And so then afterwards, Paul got a revelation and he said, he said, when I am weak, then I'm my strong. You know, whenever we're going through a circumstance, a test, a trial, physically, mentally, if we're going through a, a circumstance uh, financially or, or relationship wise, it's because in that time we may feel weak in our five senses. We feel a sense of weakness. But in reality, the grace of God, the power of God is lifting us to a new place of victory, a new place of, co of confession of what we confess to get out of that circumstance. And I, like I said, what, 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 what I was talking about, Paul, you know, I believe that Paul was getting a revelation from the Lord himself that his grace was sufficient to take authority over those things. I, 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 I just don't I can't get out of that uh, mindset of, of how much authority we have. Uh, through the knowledge of God, through the knowledge of God's word and how important the word is to give us that knowledge and that revelation is I believe that the, the Lord was was telling Paul, said, look, stop complaining, stop crying, do something about it. Take authority over, you know, bind the devil, cast the devil out. You know, uh, like you got scriptures like this in Proverbs 21. The king, you know, if you've got, if you're in a, if you got a government, if you get people together like that little town in, in, in Nicaragua, I think it was Nicaragua, um, but was it, like, was it, maybe it's Guatemala. I heard of a town like yeah, that. Yeah, maybe Guatemala. But anyway, nonetheless, it says the king's heart in, in Proverbs 21, says, verse 1, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. You know, if it's in the hand of the Lord, then you and I praying, believing, confessing, taking authority, binding the devil that's manipulating uh, the king's, the mind, the mind of the king, then of course we can change that. You know, I, I you know, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how, how much more to express that, how important the word of God is, the knowledge of God, knowledge of the abilities that he's given us in Christ, not in ourselves, not in our education, not in our own intellect, but in Christ. OK, and then we then then we won't limit God. Like it says, it was Psalm 78, 41. It says that it says they limited uh, and they 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 turn they turn back and tempted God and limited the Holy One of Israel. So God calls that a temptation. That that was they were tempting God. They were, they were saying, you can't take us into this promised land. You know, you're, you're not able to. Look at these guys. They're giants. They're bigger than we are. They got more weapons, bigger weapons, you know. But they were limiting the Holy One of God. God, they were limiting God Almighty, our God, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They limited him and not, and not believing that he was able to get him in to possess that land, as God said, I and God didn't speak in any. He didn't mince his word at all. He says, "I have given you that land. I'm not going to give it to you when you're stronger, when you're more well equipped, when you have better weapons." No, He said, "I have given you land. Go get it." You know, and, and see, that's that's uh, that's uh, uh, the grace of God right there. That's the grace of God when God tells you to do something, you believe it. And that's where it really comes down to a lot of times with all of us. And we've all gone through things. We've all gone through tests and trials and things like that, you know, on, on missions, trips like this thing, boy, that I had go through with that cough, you know, and uh, it was an infection that I had. But, um, you know, but praise God, you know, when we were weak, God was strong, you know, uh, like Paul said, you know, Paul got the revelation when I was when I'm weak, then am I strong? You know, so he said, when I suffer through these things, he goes, I will gladly suffer through him, but I don't believe he was just suffering. I believe God, the, I believe the Lord told him to take authority over that and, and, and the, 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 the spirits uh, behind the, the governors, the things on his time. So, 
we we can do that. And I and I think there's more revelation in that that that's yet to come for the church to believe and to operate in in the total authority and dominion of God and, and establish his kingdom and his will on earth as it is in heaven. Well, um, in, in regards to Paul, there was, you know, before that shipwreck, Paul had told him not to go. He knew what was going to happen. The Lord had showed him, and he says, don't leave, don't depart, but they disobeyed. But then he ended up, after that, being the key voice, just speaking into their lives. So, um, but yes, we do not, we underestimate quite often the power of God and the authority that he has delegated to us, the church here on earth. And he has delegated great power to the church. The church is the greatest force here on the earth. And so, but the church needs to know that. And the church needs to activate that power, that authority, and utilize it in the right way and get the kingdom of God extended throughout the nations of the world. Well, there is a lot of um, attack on Christianity in this country. You know, some years back when we talked about, well, in the end times there will be a persecution of believers and this and that. Well, we never could picture how that could happen in America. I thought, well, you know, okay, I could see that in some other country, but in this country, there's no way. Well, it's happening and happening in different ways. But you know what? We're not going to just cower. We're not going to hide under a bushel or under a blanket or under anything. We need to keep proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ. The word of God is powerful. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, and it pierces between the soul and the spirit. It brings revelation to the sinner that he is a sinner and in need of God, and it reveals uh, to the believer who and the authority that he has, who he is in Christ and the authority he has using the word of God as the sword of the spirit. We need to, we need to know who we are in Christ. The Bible clearly states that we are sitting in heavenly places in Christ. We are positionally not here on earth. We are in the heavenlies with Christ reigning in authority. And so when we come up against problems, needs, it's not an uphill battle. We're up in the heavens positionally in authority. And from that position, we can speak down to the problems, to the needs, to the sicknesses, to the situation, because Christ has defeated the devil. He took away the keys of death, hell, and the grave, and he reestablished our authority. And that is not because we were good or great or wonderful or earned it. He did it. He paid it all. And now we have the victory in Jesus. So we are in a yeah. position the victory and sometimes the way we act the way we go about is like we're trying to get to victory we are in a position of victory the devil uh, needs to be reminded of that the demons need to be reminded of that the circumstances need to be spoken to remember jesus said that if we speak to the mountain if you and I speak to the mountain. Many people pray, God, please speak to the mountain. No, he told you and me to speak to the mountain. That mountain you're facing, that situation you're facing, that impossibility you're facing, speak to it in the name of yeah. Jesus. You have authority in Christ. He's given it to you. Use it wisely and Amen. you will see greater things happen in your life with Albert. You know, I same thing happened like with when uh, you know, and, and this was not just not just New Testament theology. You know, I, I don't care about theology, but New Testament truth. Let me just put it that way. Uh, new uh, in Mark eleven twenty three. You know, speaking to the mountain, Jesus said, "Whosoever." That means anybody, believer or unbeliever. If you're believing something in your heart, God created us in His image, if His likeness. So when we believe, when we believe, God of course believes everything He says and doesn't. So if we believe like our father believes, even if we're not in, born again, if we believe whosoever shall speak to the mountain and does not doubt in his heart, but shall believe in his heart those things which he's saying, he's going to have whatsoever, he says, Jesus said, whatsoever, positive or negative. 
So if you're, you're speaking negative things, you're going to create those things. You know, you, you shall decree a thing, whether it's Job 22, 20, 28, you shall decree a thing and it shall be established unto you. You know, then you go, of course, you got another example of that in the Old Testament when, when Moses was bringing uh, through signs and wonders, the God was revealing, manifesting his power, his dominion and everything, uh, brought him out of Egypt. When he brought him out of Egypt, here they are, the the, the devil decides to send uh, the Pharaoh and the, and the Egyptians after him. And then they get between, right to the Red Sea and two mountains on both sides and they're between a rock and a hard place, literally. And so then you have Moses praying to God about, and God says, you know, I gave you a staff, my power, it'll be a symbol of my power. It'll turn into a snake. It'll, you know, create, you know, uh, what do you call it? Um, um, leprosy. He goes, he goes, that is my authority. That's my power for you. you use it to, to Moses, basically, is what he was telling Moses to do. So then when Moses comes between that rock and hard place with the Israelites, what does he do? He cries out to God. He says, watch God deliver us here. Let's watch God says, why are you crying out to me? What is that? What's that in your hand? He goes, you divide it. And I believe he got a little upbeat with him. He said, you divide it. He goes, divide it. And then Moses did. He divided. He, he got a revelation and he divided the Red Sea and they went through a dry land. So, I mean, it, it's, 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 it was like speaking to the, to the, to the ocean, to the Red Sea and it parted. I believe he spoke to it. I believe he, he, uh, he, God, God did it because Moses was doing. It. How about Joshua? Joshua. Now that's that just that just boggles my mind. It's hard to wrap our minds around that. And I think this is one reason why we limit God and call these things in the Scripture. You know, uh, theologians sometimes, and and of course the world they they call these things are oh there's just they're just fairy tales. These things in the Bible. You know when when Joshua. Well, science has proved it. I've got I had a science. Uh, 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 one of the nation. Well, he's probably retired now, but he was one of the nation's top, you know, uh, uh, laser scientists. You know, and he was, and he said, you know, Albert, you know, we went. He took us to dinner one time. He says, you know, uh, you know, my colleagues are beginning to to believe this Bible because a lot of them are getting born again. And I said, really, praise God. And he goes, he goes, yeah. He goes, they, they, they a lot of them have done. You know, everything's with mathematics. He tells me. And he goes, well, they did some research. You know, mathematical things equations and this and that and they figure there's like what a, a day and 10 minutes are missing in time you know i guess they can calculate it. to me that boggles my mind too but it says he said that there's a day he goes and that confirmed and, he goes, and i told him what showed him in the bible what what happened and he goes he goes so that confirmed to them that there has to be a god you know so they started believing so these things, when we limit God, you know, there's there, we, we have to confess these things. We have to speak to them. We have to speak to the mountain, not to God about the mountain, but speak to the mountain like God told you. know, that's what Jesus is telling us in Mark 11, 23, just like Moses spoke to the Red Sea to part, you know, because God had told him there. Well, we have that same authority, that dominion, that power in Christ, that our staff is the name of Jesus. That's the authority and all, uh, you know, all power and all authority, like Jesus said in uh, Matthew 28, you know, 18, I think it is. So, I mean, you know, that's all authority and all power being given to him. So that's our authority. That's our power. That name that's above every name that every knee must bow to. So, if, so if we have that, then we need to start speaking confession. And I, you know, before I was praying a little bit about this, 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 uh, zoom meeting, uh, I, I feel confession is very important to confess the thing and not confess the negative. <laughs> you confess the negative, you'll get the negative. You know, but to confess a good thing, you know, the, the positive things of what God's word says we can do in Christ. Praise God. And um, Albert, there are people that uh, may have tuned in and don't know Christ as a Savior yet. And we want them to know Jesus as Savior. And yes, uh, um, well, Jesus died for you. He paid for your sins. And he loves you. He has loved you with an everlasting love. And if you are that person that does not know Jesus as Savior yet, oh. let me tell you, you can come to know him as Savior today. Would you bow your head, unless you're driving, if you're someplace where you can bow your head and just, just close your eyes for a moment and, and repeat this prayer after me. If you want to give your life over to Jesus, just say, Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I admit that I'm a sinner. I ask you to forgive me all of my sins. Come into my heart. 
I believe that you died on the cross for me. I believe that you resurrected from the dead on the third day. And I receive you as my one and only Lord and Savior. Save me, O God, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 You prayed that prayer or something similar sincerely. Christ has come into your life. Do three things each day. Talk to God. We call it prayer, but it's conversing with God. Secondly, let him talk to you. Read his word, the Bible. A good place to start. The whole Bible is important, but if you're just a beginner, a good place to start is in the fourth book of the New Testament. The Bible contains 66 books. Well, the fourth book in the New Testament called The Gospel According to St. John is a very good place to start. Open that up and you will learn more about the love of Jesus. And then thirdly, start telling other people about him, that you are now a follower of Jesus. And something very important, find a Bible preaching, Bible uh, believing church or group of believers. If you're in a country where churches are not permitted, but there's got to be Christians someplace meeting together, maybe in homes, maybe in apartments, find them and get together with them so you can grow in your faith in Jesus Christ. Uh, amen. And write us, let us know so that we can pray for you as well. Brother Albert, time is running very quickly. Um, America is going through a lot uh, today, and I don't want to get into talking about all the uh, bad stuff that is happening, but we have authority, as you have pointed out, and I want us to take authority over the principalities, rulers of darkness that are trying to destroy this nation. We want this nation to once again be a beacon of light to the nations of the world. And we want the gospel of Jesus Christ to go forth. And so let's exercise our authority. And, and I want to emphasize this. You are watching. Prayer is Your prayer is not in vain. Amen. And I want to thank all of you who prayed for us when we were in Cuba. Amen. And I tell you, God answered your prayers. Thank you for your prayers. God protected us, God kept us. And there were moments from the moment we set a foot in that country, you know, uh, just trying to get in through formalities. There were some issues there. But thank you for praying. God worked everything out and his work was accomplished. When you pray for this nation, you may not see the result immediately, but God is working. Look at the fact that people are getting saved on college campuses. That is a miracle because college campuses is where they turn many young people into atheists, into communists, into people that don't believe in God and reject God. And so yet we are seeing right now many coming to Jesus Christ. And so Let's pray that that spreads to all the campuses around the country. Let's pray that there's a, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing sparks, as if I can put it that way, or, or small fires here and there. We want to see an outpouring of the power of God on this nation. We want to see true revival nationwide. And your prayers and mine are not in vain. They are being heard by God, and I believe that God is answering those prayers. Brother Albert, would you pray for America? Amen. And I believe I believe that it's, it's our it's our prayers, not only just not just for years on I mean, but every believer, every one of you believers out there that are praying, believing, and trusting God, and believing in God that that you have authority in Christ, and you can take authority over the devil and destroy his works, because that's why Jesus was manifest. First John three eight. For this purpose, he was manifest to destroy the works of the devil. He's still doing so through you and I. So let's keep praying. You start seeing the revival in these colleges, changing them, change the curriculum. We forbid in the name of Jesus, any devil that's infiltrating our colleges, our universities, our grade schools, the middle schools and high schools with 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 uh, that spirit of antichrist in, in, in our universities and all these schools in Jesus' name. We bind you, cast you out of our schools in Jesus' name, out of our government, that spirit of antichrist, that spirit of lawlessness and corruption in our government, we bind you and cast you out of our government in Jesus' name. We lose the righteousness. We loosen the kingdom of God in our government. We loosen God's government in 
the, in our government in the name of Jesus, the kingdom of God on earth, in our government as it is in heaven, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we thank you for the authority, the dominion you give us to do so. Lord, and we just loosen uh, ju your judgment and your justice because the devil's already been judged. Your word says in John 16, he's already been ju judged. So, Lord, we lose your judgment, your justice upon our government, Lord, that will be straightened out in Jesus' name, and all the corruption and the theft and the and uh, the lawlessness that's going on in our government, especially in California. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over the, the governing powers in Jesus' name of demonic powers that are trying to infiltrate infiltrate the government of California and in and ruin this state in the name of Jesus. We bind you, cast you out, and every person that's submitted to you, we cast you out also in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for putting God, godly righteousness and godliness back into our government, Lord, and, and, and lawfulness in Jesus' name, integrity in Jesus' name in our government. Lord, we thank you in Jesus' name. And we just pray and ask you for term limits in our Congress in the name of Jesus, Lord, term limits two to four years in Jesus' name. And we just believe you for, we decree it, that it shall be established in the name of Jesus. Term limits for those in Congress, in the name of Jesus, and every power and principality, the ruler of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places that would try to interfere with that being implemented, you're bound and cast out of the way in the name of Jesus. Lord, I decree it, declare it, I thank you for it in Jesus' name. But Lord, not only this, I thank you for tearing down that spirit of communism and Cuba in Jesus' name, and, and Lord, I thank you, casting it out in Jesus. We loosen Cuba to the liberty of that's in Christ Jesus, by the law of the, of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus, under Cuba and all of the, these, and China in the name of Jesus. Same thing there, we just cast down that spirit in Jesus' name of communism, of control in Jesus' name, and cast you out. In the name of Jesus Christ, we loosen revival in America, China, Cuba, Europe, Middle East, in the name of Jesus, we and, and Iran, in Jesus, they let the youth rise up. In Jesus, they put a stop to this 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 uh, uh, war with Israel and this mindset. We tear down that mindset in in the Middle East of the between the Arabs and the Jews. We cast it down in the name of Jesus, Lord. We loosen, we loosen, Father, your liberty, your peace, and be, pray for the peace of Jerusalem. We thank you, Father, for for bringing a unity and agreement there and revival, revival. We lose some revival in the Arab countries, revival in Israel. We lose some revival in Europe, in Jesus' name, Russia, in Jesus' name, and Lord, we, in, 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 in South America, Mexico, in Jesus' name, and those cartels and their corruption are destroyed in the name of Jesus and the government just in Mexico and in all these countries that deal with cartels, in Jesus' name, your works are destroyed in Jesus' name, you're brought to justice. I loosen judgment and justice upon you in the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you that it's done in your precious holy name, Lord Jesus. We expect to hear, will hear good reports concerning this in your precious holy name and by your authority, your power, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And Father, we pray for the nation of Ukraine. We pray for peace in the region. We yes. bind the principalities and rulers of the darkness of this age that are seeking to destroy that nation and to stop the move of God there. But we know they will not succeed because you have said that you will build your church and the gates of hell will not prevent it. And Lord, we speak peace healing, salvation, deliverance for the nation of Ukraine. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Well, our time has gone quickly. Thank you all who have joined us from the nations of the world. Please, please share this program on your profiles on Facebook, uh, on uh, share it wherever you're watching us on LinkedIn, on YouTube, on Telegram, on Rumble, and on our webpage. Thank you for joining us. And um, as you heard us talking about ministries uh, in Cuba. We're also involved in other nations of the world. Please continue to pray for the nation of Nepal. There are difficulties there. The missionaries recently graduated from the Bible school there are being tracked, are being uh, 
um, uh, looked for by the government as so they're not successful in evangelizing. They're trying to stop them from proselytizing. But again, uh, the church will go forth because Jesus is building his church in the nations of the world. Pray for other nations, Pakistan. We get requests from there, from India, from other nations of the world. We are praying for you. We are praying for revival in America, in Europe, in the United Kingdom. And we know that God hears our prayers. And if God steers your heart, you want to support our ministries, please go to our webpage right now, globalvisionministries.org. It is, uh, um, there are options there to give using PayPal or Givelify. You could do that right now. And, or you could write a check to the ministry, Global Vision Ministries, P.O. Box 5377. El Dorado Hills, California, 95762 USA. Your gifts to the ministry in the United States are tax deductible. Thank you. Thank you in advance for giving. May God give back to you as only he can. Thank you, Brother Albert, for joining me today. Thank you all who have joined us. And remember, don't look at how big that problem or that need may appear. Look at the answer. Christ is the answer. He still is, and he always will be, and he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. God richly bless you.